Welcome. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph this exponential function. So when graphing exponential functions, they're just like any other function. Um, or even in this case, you know, this equation, all we simply want to do is, you know, if we're not even understanding what the relationship is of the problem, um, or if we don't know what it's going to look like, just create a table. That's all, you know, going back to when you guys first learned how to graph, let's just pick a table of values and graph it. Now, there's no reason to get crazy with your table of values. Pick values that are very easy to compute, all right? Um, usually you want to always pick, you know, a negative and a positive um, values to kind of see where, what's going to be happening with the relationship of the graph. Now, it is important to understand at least what the relationship of the graph is going to look like. And uh, you don't need to know it exactly, but at least for an exponential function, you should understand that that graph is going to look something like this. So therefore, as long as I can predict what the behavior is, whatever points I'm going to choose um, are going to at least allow me to create the path of this uh, figure. Or, I'm sorry, path of this equation. So the three points I'm going to choose to pick, uh, let's see, I can pick, let's choose x equals negative 1. x equals 0 is always a great choice. And then let's choose x equals positive 2. All right? So these are just three random points that I picked. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these values in for x and then find my y value. So I created a graph over here with my x and y axis, and notice that my x's are going by 3's and my y's are going by 2's. Now that's by design. I've done a couple of these problems before, so I know exactly kind of what to expect. Um, so if we look at, to solve these out, all we're simply going to do is now plug in your answers. So y equals 2 times 3 to the negative first. Well, to simplify this, that equals 2 to the 1 over 3 to the first power. 3 to the first power is just going to be 3. So now I have um, y equals 2 times 1 third, which is 2 thirds, which if you want to write in a decimal form, is going to be 0.666, you know, repeating. So if I'm going by 2s, that's going to be kind of difficult to uh, represent, right? Well, I'm going to go over negative 1. 1 would be half of that, and then 0.6 is going to be two-thirds of that. I'm roughly going to have a point somewhere around there. And like I said, I'm just using the table. I'm going to be a little half, um, you know, not everything exact, so please excuse me. The next one is going to be, I'll just put that as the fraction as my exact value. Next one, I'm going to put 0. And 0 is always a great uh, point to choose when you're trying to develop your table. Because a lot of things happen with zero. You know, we know that whenever you multiply a number times zero, it always it goes to zero. Well, and also any number raised to the zero power equals one. So therefore, I will now have two times one, which equals two. So we can go and graph that point, which is on our table. And lastly, let's just plug in two. So I have y equals two times three to the second power. Well, three to the second power equals nine. And 2 times 9 is going to equal 18. So I go over 2, and then I go up 18. And so you're going to say, well, I wonder what you know, the next one's going to look like. Well, I don't know. Let's for fun, let's, let's just see what it would be. So let's pretend I wanted to do the next one. And let's just say I want to say y equals to the third. This is going to keep on getting closer and closer to 0. So I don't really want to do another one. It's just going to get really But I'd like to see what the next one would look like. So if I did 3, uh, I'm sorry, so if I just said y equals 3, it'd be 2 times 3 cubed equals, well, 3 cubed is going to be 27. 27 times 2 is going to equal 54. And you can already see, you guys thought, oh, wow, your graph is so big, you know, it's so, so small on the x and y axis, but it's so tall in the y axis. Well, look at, when I go to 3, I have to go all the way up to 54, which is probably going to be some point up there. So if I just connect my points you can see that they're going to go somewhat in that kind of direction. So I hope this understood. I hope you guys understood this tutorial. Just make sure you set up your um, set up your table and that'll help everything else fall in place. All right, thanks.